Welcome to New Breed TV, owners and New Breed racing fans. Episode 10, we're getting into the double digits, which is great. Uh, we're into one month down into 2019, January, and the racing industry already, already doing itself no favours. I'm not going to comment on the Darren Weir situation. I know there'd be some people watching on seeing if I've got anything to say, but until all the facts are there and the inquiries have been run, I think anyone with a social presence should probably keep quiet until we work out what's going on and then we can all put our two cents in after everything's run and won. So let's get straight into the show and uh, look at the fortnight that has been. Okay, as I said in the last episode, very quiet on the racing front, only a handful of runners. So we had Epic Rant running at Doombin. He ran his third, third again at Doombin. Uh, he's now been sold as a tried horse. He got sold on English Digital this week. Uh, when we purchased him, he came from Sydney with $13,000 prize money. He knocked off 182 k uh, up here in Queensland in just two preparations. So a huge, huge result for, for the owners and just another good show that uh, Queensland Racing, you can earn a dollar and the colour of the money is the same as it is in Sydney. Uh, but we move on, we then had Boomista having a first start for the stable coming from the 2K yard. Uh, she was given to us, uh, she hadn't raced in over a year and had a nice, really nice third up there at the Sunshine Coast, hit the line well and uh, I thought it wasn't too bad of a run really for a horse which hadn't had a run in over a year. So she's knocking on the door, she should knock off a win or two. Uh, quite early in this preparation, if all things go well. Uh, the, we then head over to Ipswich, Angel of Leon. She got too far back. She's looking for a mile, so uh, look for her when she gets over further. Uh, Coco Fashion backed up at the Gold Coast. Uh, when I say back up, I think back up her strong performance, her win at the Sunshine Coast. Uh, they really ran along and she just had to do too much work. She ran home strong. It was probably the runner of the race and we're looking to back her up this week. Happy with her. Our fault, Fast Song is the horse that we said to follow in the last episode. He went down to Grafton, ran really, really well, just got hit the front too soon, got a little bit lost, had a nice healthy blow, but he should be winning a race very shortly. The trials, that's where the party was at. We had 10 trial at the Gold Coast and then another eight at Doombin the following week. Couple of highlights from the trials, uh, probably three that, that stood out were Manea. She coming back, having a first soft trial after only being in work, work for a short amount of time. Ran home in 33.05, untouched. Uh, didn't move on her. This looks like it could be her campaign where everything's come to, coming together. Uh, she's bigger, stronger, she's relaxed. Uh, Jag Guthrie and Chester rode her in the trial and he was absolutely glowing in his report coming back. I was blown away, so very excited for her preparation. Uh, this could be the preparation where she goes down to Sydney and based on this trial and the way that the form stacked up in the last preparation, I think she might be able to do some damage down there. Uh, we then had Get Me Charlie. He has been come back a little bit disappointing after a few trial wins last prep. Uh, he still hasn't raced, but he had a comeback in, he's beaten 11 lengths in his first trial. Uh, we put a set of blinkers on him at Doombin, he sharpened right up and he won the trial. So it was, it was really nice, he'll look to go to the races over the next fortnight. We then had another new horse to the stable, Intermiss Me, uh, with the first up racing guys. She was beaten 40 lengths in the first trial, so I assume something was wrong there in the first trial. Uh, that wasn't with us, but she trialled extremely well for her first trial. I think she should be winning a race. I don't think she's a superstar. She's a pretty unassuming sort of horse, but uh, hopefully she'll win a race once she gets over to 1400. Okay, up and coming runners, Saturday Gold Coast, Bumista Deep Blue Sea, House of Drama, Bumista, who we touched on before, she's stepping up to 1200. Probably look, looking for further, but also got a bit of fitness improvement as well, kicking off from barrier seven. She's in a cutest race, so there's a little bit of depth there. Uh, gonna be hard to tip, but she should run well and hope, hoping she can just continue to show that improvement that she's shown. And, and like I highlighted before, she hadn't raced for over 12 months in, into that first up run, so we're, we're still learning a bit about her, but she looks good in the coat, worked well, just expecting a good run, but no declaration there. A Deep Blue Sea House of Drama. Deep Blue Sea's coming off a slightly disappointing run up at the Sunshine Coast. We'll give him a little bit of a break. Uh, done a bit of work with him, so looking for him to bounce back. Uh, this is the toughest race that he's been in though. Uh, House of Drama, 
Uh, we've done a bit of work with her as well. She's, uh, she's showing good improvement, but I'll probably think another run again before she hits her peak. Uh, so they're the runners at the Gold Coast. We then go over to Sunday, the Sunshine Coast, Coco Fashion. Uh, she's the one that we're gonna be, she's backing up from the Gold Coast Saturday into the Sunshine Coast Sunday where she's won before. And I think it's the perfect race for her. She's drawn barrier two, little bit of work this morning, worked well. So it looks like she's recovered well. If she has recovered well, I think she'll be very, very competitive. Uh, get me Charlie, drawn wide gate, so we'll scratch him, look for him to run in the next two weeks. Snipstream, acceptance have just come out for Ipswich. He's the horse which we've been having a few barrier issues. He's been going under the gates at the trials. Looks like we've got him right. We've put a few gear adjustments on him, but just want to see him run before we start uh, tipping him. There's one to beat in the race, make you think. Uh, on form, they're the two to follow. Uh, we then look for nominations. Fast Song Lismore, might go to Lismore on the 11th, and Get Me Charlie, as we said before, Grafton on the 7th, Gold Coast 9th, or Lismore on the 7th. So that's about it for the up and coming. Big set of B grass jump outs next week. We'll have about 14 running in the jump out, so there should be a bit more traction into the next episode, episode 11. Okay, tips. We had Fast Song, he ran second there at Grafton. I think he's worth following. He'll knock off his maiden pretty quickly. Coco Fashion, she's found the right race. As I said, if she recovers well and backs up well from last Saturday's run, I think she'll definitely be in the finish. Uh, then if switch on Wednesday, Snipstream and Make You Think. I said Make You Think's definitely the one to beat, so hopefully Snipstream can get in there and we can put them in for the Quinella. That would be great. Uh, so they're the tips from our very few runners leading in the next episode. We're now winding up from the Magic Millions, the last shares remaining from a couple of horses we've got left. We've got the Your Song filly. Our streaking comment, she's got 15% remaining. We're going to run the video of her parading over the top of my audio here. So very neat filly, two-year-old sort of type, muscled up. The half-sisters by the factor just had a trial at Ramwick, had a first trial, I believe, down there in Sydney with Gay Waterhouse, ran, ran a nice third. So I'll be looking for her to put something on the pedigree page, uh, but bought this filly just on type, as we always do. Lovely head, beautiful mover, strong, compact. She ticks all the boxes. Two and a half percent share, only 1,317. Five percent share, 2,634. So only 15% remaining. I'd expect her to be sealed up by the end of the week. Uh, we then got the shooting to win Bells Will Ring Colt. He's probably the best bred horse. Uh, one of the best bred horses we bought. Uh, lovely, lovely purchase for only 55,000. Big, strong colt. We said that he was the the colt that really looked like he'd stand out and be positioned in a really take his part in the godolphin yard big strong uh, imposing colt we've got 32 and a half percent left in him and then this week we're going to release him the valencia accused colt he's just a i don't know how you say this but it's the first words that come to my head when i see him he's just a sexy sexy colt he's just so striking big, he's black, he strikes, he's just striking. You could really see him parading around Flemington or Ramwick. He's just so striking. A 2.5% share in him is going to be 2,700 and a 5% share is going to be about 5,000. 5, so we're getting all the details together on him. We'll release that uh, this week. His mare accused was a city winner. She's also the three-quarter sister to the stallion Denman, who was a group one Golden Rose winner. So he's got a good pedigree to back him. Uh, Valencia was a $1.3 million yearling. Uh, I'm just going from point to point here and he's uh, he ticks all the boxes. So he's been uh, very... Uh, he's been asked about a lot from a, a lot of owners writing an email, so we're going to release him this week. Keep an eye out for him. Okay, wrapping up episode 10, thank you to KBL Thoroughbreds for hosting our parade out there, all our Magic Millions purchases. It was really great to take our owners out there. New owners buying shares and also owners which have purchased shares going out to see all their babies, so that was a great day. Uh, we're now heading off to English Classic Sale where there's over a thousand yearlings down there, so hopefully we can buy some more purchases like we did at Magic Millions because that was a that was a fantastic sale for us and uh, look forward to kicking into episode 11 and hopefully the industry as a whole has got some positive things to uh, to be said about it.